Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. Today I'd like to show you how to customize the GIMP user interface. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a powerful free open source software used for photo editing and graphic design. If you haven't already installed GIMP, you can pause this video and go over to the official website www.gimp.org to download and install the latest version of GIMP. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll be using GIMP 2.10.22, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time this video was created. So let's get started. If you're new to GIMP, the user interface might seem a little intimidating at first, so let's have a wee look around. Let's start at the top with the main menus. Here you can access everything in GIMP. Let's check out just a few menus. In Files, you have options to create a new canvas, open images and save files. Let's move along to the color menu. You will find all the tools to manipulate the colors of images such as color balance, color temperature, hue and saturation, shadow and highlights and more. Let's move along to the filters. Here you'll find such filters as blur, enhance, distort, light and shadow and more. And in the center is the canvas. Here you can paint, draw, Edit images, create complex compositions. As you can see, I have created an image thumbnail to upload with this video. Rulers are placed at the top and on the left side of the canvas, so you can measure parts of your image or position graphic elements more precisely. By default, the rulers are set to pixels. However, you can change the unit setups to inches, meters, yards, and other options. Let's get back on track. On the top left, we have the toolbox. Here are all the core tools in GIMP, such as selection tools, paint tools, transfer tools, and other tools. By default, the two icons have been grouped together into submenus. Groups are marked with a small triangle at the bottom corner of the icon. When you hover your mouse over an icon, a small tooltip will appear with the description of the tool and also the names of the other tools included in the group. To activate the tool, you can use key shortcuts or left click on the icon to select the tool from the menu. However, if you are a new user, you might find this a bit challenging and time consuming. So if you prefer to see all the tools separately in the toolbox, I'll show you how to set this up in a minute. The color selector is also in the toolbox. From here, you can select colors for the foreground and background and also fill in a specific object or selection. Having a good understanding of all the tools in GIMP is fundamental, so we'll go into more detail on all the tools in other videos. Below the toolbox and on the right side are panels. These panels, or docs, hold one or more dialogues. For example, the Tools Options dock is below the toolbox, and in the tab menu you have access to all the active tools options and settings. Also along this menu you'll find the tabs for Undo History, Device Status and Image. And on the top right panel, you'll find the menu bar with options and settings for brushes, patterns and fonts. The layers, channels and paths are in the panel below. GIMP has a very customizable interface. You can reposition the dialogues for a comfortable, faster workflow. To do this, click and hold on the tab title. Notice a dark blue line appears around the borders when the mouse pointer goes over. Drag the dialogue to another tab, then release the mouse to anchor the dialogue to the menu. Or if you prefer, leave the dialog floating on the canvas. From the tab configuration menus, you can add new and close dialogs to the tab menu. You can also open up dialogs from the main menu. Let's go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and left click on the dialog title. GIMP will place the new dialog on the right side. You can also right click anywhere on the canvas to select Windows from the flyout menu. To maximize or minimize a window, click and drag on the border. There are several small icons with three small marks indicating the adjustable borders. If you are interested, you can arrange the panels in a single or multi-column display. To do this, close all the tabs on the left and minimize the border so it's one column. Now when you hover your mouse over all the tools, you can easily read the submenus. If you want a double column display, drag the title of the tab to the border of the panel 
and when the border changes colour to a brighter blue, release the mouse to anchor the dialogue in position. Don't worry too much about messing up the panels as you can restore the windows back to their default positions from Preferences. Now let's have a quick look at Preferences. Come up to the Edit menu and click Preferences. Here in the Preferences dialog on the left under Interface, select Theme. There are four user interface themes available in GIMP. Dark, which is the default theme. Grey, Light and System. The icons are independent from themes, so let's have a look at the icons theme option. You can choose from Color, Legacy, Symbolic, Symbolic High Contrast for darker themes. However, the Symbolic Inverted and Symbolic Inverted High Contrast work well with lighter themes. You can adjust the size of the icons. Switch to Customize Icon Size from the menu and you can choose from Small, Medium, Large and Huge. I had already set mine to large for this video. As I mentioned earlier, if you would like to view all the hidden tools in the toolbox, in the toolbox options, under Appearance, you can uncheck Use Group Tools. If you've modified anything, then click OK to apply the changes and all your settings will be saved. If not, just close the dialog. However, before you do this, let's look at the window management and I'll show you where to restore the window positions to default values. Click the button for Reset Saved Window Positions to Default Values and click OK, then OK again. Now the next time you open GIMP, the panels and dialogues will be restored to the default positions. We'll wrap up here. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.